Yeah, it's forty eight hundred. Forty eight hundred, and month. then her mortgage payments. I want to say like tw- like twenty five, like twenty seven hundred a month. So she's already making like two grand. Two grand a month of, of income. Of just cash income. flow after all expenses are paid. Thanks for tuning in this week for your dose of the weekly dose <laughs> with your host, Agent Alex D, and my man Leo, sold by Leopold, also known as Leopoldo, aka Chestnut. Last but not least, the world's greatest, the one and only. <laughs> I can't come up with another one. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm fresh out well, of the news for you. Hopefully you're like tapped out for the next year. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll have them next week. Don't worry, guys. I got you guys covered. I'm tired of you. Man. Yeah, dude. That's how you been. It's been, a, it's been a while since you made an episode, huh? It has been a while. Yeah, it's been a rough couple of weeks. <laughs> no. It's been rough. What are you talking about? I wrote for you, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> Speak for your own damn self. <laughs> so how come we haven't been making uh, podcasts weekly? How come we haven't been making them? Yeah. What, do you want, I, to, we're you want still, to tell our people why we've been? Guys, we're still floating around. We're trying to find a studio, but we keep coming back to this place here. Yeah. But, I mean, it works out. It looks nice. It looks nice. Feels nice. Feels good. Um, that's not the only reason we've been super busy with our actual business is real estate. <laughs> so, I don't know why Leo doesn't want to mention that. <laughs> oh, that. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the beginning of the year, the first quarter. It's insanely busy. So, um, we're extremely blessed that we have a lot of clients and a lot of uh, business coming our way. So, very grateful for all that. But that's why we've been kind of uh, restricted or we haven't been able to do it every week. But... Life happens. Life happens. <laughs> yeah, we gotta squeeze in when we can. Yeah, but we'll, we'll do our best, you know, to do it every week and make sure that we're on top of it. Um, this is why we're here because we know we had to get it done. <laughs> we have a million other things to do in our business, but you know, we had to do it. Got to get back to our people, like we said in the first episode. <laughs> so give the people what they want. <laughs> <laughs> and they want Leo, so <laughs> like, brought them to you guys. Want, You're welcome. They want chestnuts. <laughs> they want chestnuts. <laughs> oh man. Oh no, but it's, it's been good. I mean, a lot has happened, actually. Like, not just in our real estate business, but in the world in itself. Yeah. Like, a lot of tragic, a lot of other things that are going on in the economy. It's mm-hmm. been pretty hectic and intense. Yeah. I would yeah. say. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Tragedies, politics, mm-hmm. finances, new credit checks. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, it's really intense. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff going on in 2020. It's a yeah. new decade. It's a new decade. The Roaring Twenties, Set, right? Setting the tone for the Roaring Twenties, yeah. <laughs> That's true. We did enter the year pretty, uh, with a bang. Yeah, a lot of turbulence. I don't know if you guys saw our poster. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, that was a perfect, that was a perfect, uh, picture, man. Yeah, yeah there's flames and everything new for January. Well, instead of walking from flames, we should be walking into flames. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Man, it's, yeah, it's been interesting, so. It's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be really cool. Hopefully we can keep you guys up to date on what's yeah. going on. Mm-hmm. I know that credit score thing, Not don't know too much about it, but it seems pretty complex now. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. We gotta read into that. See yeah. what's really going on. Be well informed for our clients and for ourselves too. I feel like credit is very important. Yeah, you can't do for anything a consumer in this country. Or for the public. Yeah, you can't do. Yeah, if you have bad credit, you, you can't do anything in this country without credit. You're pretty much. Yeah, you got to buy everything in cash, or you got <laughs> to operate differently. But I just feel like if you're yeah. a credit worthy, you know, customer or whatever, you should. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of options. Exactly. I just feel like, um, and it just feels good. We have good credit score. It just feels great. You yeah. check your score. You're like, oh, you're in the seven hundreds. Cool. Let me stay there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. man. But it's yeah. It's, it's like it's, once you reach like the eight hundreds, you're like an elite club. <laughs> yeah, so you feel like you're superior. <laughs> you're like you're fifty, sir. <laughs> Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> That's hilarious because yeah, we, we do talk about that stuff too. Yeah, but um, your sister, she like floats so much. She doesn't even walk; she just floats around. Yeah, like, yeah, she always uses she's like on a whole other level. Dude. <laughs> We're like beneath her. Huh? She's, just, <laughs> she's like, you've been blessed. Just, just five extra points. <laughs> oh, man. Just being around her, like our credit just goes. Yeah. Up. <laughs> That's so true. You have black cards and everything just thrown at you. Exactly, dude. 
Yeah, your cards get heavier. <laughs> that's hilarious. No, but yeah, it's, uh, we should definitely look into that. Yeah, for sure. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for the, the credit updates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, so what do we what do we got today, Leo? Yeah, I know you want to talk about something. What? I had a, I had a question for you. Okay, let's hear Since it. You're, the, the, you're like the magic little eight ball. You just got to rub your head a little bit. <laughs> get, get all the knowledge out of you. <laughs> so, my question to you today. Yes. And I'm sure our fans and our family and my mom who watches the podcast. <laughs> my number one fan. <laughs> she wants to know, um, when is a good time to invest? Or when does someone know that they should be investing in real estate. When is a good time to invest? I mean, like how should someone like me, for instance, like I'm operating at this level, I have this, you know, X amount of income coming in, uh, my credit is good, I got low debts, whatever. Like when, when would a person like me know that, hey, you know what, maybe I should explore this option? Um, I think it's just being extremely prepared. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no like set time. Of course, yeah. Um, when you should start investing or set time in the market when you should invest mm -hmm. because good deals pop up all the time. You can buy a good deal in a bad market. Exactly. Yeah. In a bad market, in, in a, a high, high market, market, when it's peaked, whatever. In a bull market, mm -hmm. like any type of market, there's, of there's just going to be good deals. Mm -hmm. For sure. The main objective is just being well informed. Mm -hmm. um, and from there, you know exactly how much money you need stashed away. Yeah. Because once you're well informed, if a good deal pops up, you'll know it. Yeah. And you'll jump on it. Yeah. And I think it's just making that step of jumping on it. Yeah. And and yeah, just going from there. Because yeah, yeah there's, there's people that um, they're ready for mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. but the right deal hasn't popped up for them. Mm -hmm. And they're... And that's it. And it's just looking through those, weeding through them, and then once you see the right one, then you just jump on it. But do you feel like those people are sitting back waiting because they have like an unrealistic deal in mind, or they really don't know enough information to see what a good deal yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, it circles back to being well-informed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So how would someone get well-informed then? <laughs> There's so many ways. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you're reading the... Was it was it called the real estate investment book? The, the book of real estate investments. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then I skimmed through it. Remember? Mm -hmm. I was like, no that, no that, no yeah. that. <laughs> I think I finished the book in two seconds, two yeah. minutes. <laughs> no, I mean I've learned a few things, even though yeah. I know a lot about real estate and especially investments too. I, I, I mean I've read other books too yeah. about investing, so I know a lot about it. But I feel like you can always learn something new. Yeah, exactly. In you know a new book, just yeah. seeing like a different. Perspective yeah. of the author, or just you being at a different state of mind in today's yeah. day. You know, exactly. people change constantly; their mind changes every year, mm -hmm. every day. I'd say. But yeah, I mean, the reason I brought that up is because I mean that's the baseline mm -hmm. real estate investments. Yeah. What you need to know, mm -hmm. and then as I was skimming through it, I was like, I know that. So at the same time, I was like, Alex, no, you know this too. Mm -hmm. So, going back to your question. Is yes, I mean they should talk to us. <laughs> so always <laughs> because we're like walking books. <laughs> yeah, and I think that just solidified the Literally, fact uh, <laughs> that what we know is already in a book that we've never read until yeah. recently. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it just solidifies that we know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, and that's, um, sure. that's like the easiest way. But of course, always do independent research mm -hmm. and run your own numbers and get full understanding of it, especially yeah. if you know trying to you know, real estate investing, mm -hmm. you know, just what to expect. Yeah. So let's say for me, for example, let's say I was in real estate, I'm just making, you know, pretty good money and it's just in my bank account. What would you say would be the best advice or where should I start? Should I like start researching online, seeing like how I can grow my money, how I can invest in real estate, or should I go meet with a realtor or someone that's knowledgeable that knows about investments? And then um, do my research afterwards. I think, uh, I mean, I think anyone these days starts online. Mm -hmm. So that's the best place to start is start online and just get a better kind of understanding yeah. of what you like and don't like. I mean, you have to ask yourself when you're doing real estate investing, mm -hmm. I mean, 
Are you going to want to deal with tenants? Are you, you know, fit to be, you know, be a landlord? Yeah. Are you going to go to the property manager route? And then are you looking more for maybe just single families or you're open to... Yeah, there's so many ways you can go. Man. Yeah, exactly. And just kind of see like um, what you're comfortable starting at and just get a list of questions ready and then sitting down. Yeah. And then talking about it more in depth with someone that's knowledgeable about it mm-hmm. and actually just discussing the pros and the cons of it. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. I feel like it's an important thing that you actually touch base on mm-hmm. right now is there is so many ways that you can make a lot of money in real estate, yeah. but it's really narrowing it down where you see yourself work, wanting to work in. Like, do you want to do condo uh, rentals? Do you want to do Airbnb? Do you want to do single family? Do you want to do apartments? Mm-hmm. There's so many ways to go. So you just got to really focus in on what you want to do. Yeah. And then you said, do all the research on that. Yeah, exactly. Because you can get lost. There's so <laughs> much damn information out there. Yeah. And you can just, you'll spend your whole entire life just doing research and you'll never make deals. Mm-hmm. By the time that like, you'd say that I'm doing research my entire life, you would already bought like a hundred properties. Exactly. I would have been like a multi-millionaire. Yeah, 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 that's that, I think that's why it's important to talk to people mm-hmm. that already own properties or deal yeah. with a lot of investing and you know because I think anyone that's already like investing they're more than happy to share their knowledge yeah. and let you know where you know where they're at what's good what's bad yeah and share them I mean obviously don't just take anyone's word and just run with it no <laughs> do your other investigation too yeah but it's always good to get you know everyone and always ask a lot of questions too exactly. like, i mean ask a ton of questions especially with like investors and stuff yeah. like that because you want to know all the information and you also want to know if they're bullshitting you yeah <laughs> you know you want, some people lie you want to, yeah, you want to sniff them out yeah, yeah. You, you ask the right questions and you, yeah. you try to like you know see where they're really at and if they're really telling the truth or not mm-hmm. um so yeah no, i definitely agree with that so no but it it, it it, it's really important to know what well, no let's say like networking it's mm-hmm. like the people you know is like really important when it comes to this industry so yeah I would say it's, it's knowing the right people will get you a couple steps ahead of the other person yeah just doing the research by themselves so no exactly yeah networking and uh, taking action yeah uh, that's the next step because yeah once you're well prepared well informed mm-hmm. And from there, you know exactly how much you need, and then just looking for the deal, and just it might may not be the perfect deal, but if it checks off most of the boxes, or if yeah. it looks like a sound investment, or there's growth, mm-hmm. because you can't just look at the numbers now, like what's the potential? Yeah. And you also have to look at your game plan. Yeah. Too. I'm like, are you trying to, you know, you know, to roll this over to other investments, or is this just this one property forever? Or yeah. Are you trying to plant? Are you planning on flipping it, or are you going to buy a whole? buying hold there's so many different ways to do it yeah. what your investment plan is mm-hmm. and then just go based off of that and just take action and just yeah you know, go for it that's true that's very true so it just really depends on how you want to structure it so yeah, yeah. I, mean, I like that it's pretty good it's pretty good info yeah. I mean, what about you personally what would you where do you see yourself like investing uh where do i see myself investing yeah i like um is there like one specific category or area of real estate that fascinates you that you know, you get excited about or that you would you know you see yourself investing in the future down the road? Uh, definitely. Well, I want multifamilies mm-hmm. and then Airbnbs. 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 Everyone's one. That's the it's sexy something. thing right now. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it does. Yeah. It is. It really is. No, yeah. I mean, I was thinking about buying. But people make a lot of money off the Airbnb. Oh, yeah. It's like insane. I just looked at a, a P&L for an Airbnb mm-hmm. here in Anaheim, actually. Um, you can see in the beginning of the year they're only making like maybe 2.3 to almost 3k a month mm-hmm. on average. Summertime hits, it jumps up to 5k, and then they have like a peak in them like towards the end of the year, it mm-hmm. goes up to like 7 8k. Good lord. That's insane, that's, dude. That is crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. I can't remember what the cap rate was, but they did all the formulas and stuff like mm-hmm. that, and the numbers were like astonishing. But the thing is with Airbnbs, you get the uncertainty. It's not steady, right? So yeah. that's the whole thing. But I mean, if you're very. For us, we're younger, so we can take a lot more risk yeah. tolerance. So and that's pretty cool. No, but, yeah, we should take the side with it. Yeah, too. So that's cool. Exactly. Yeah, but then on top, because it's, going back to what you were saying, <laughs> on top of like, yeah, it's actually pretty good money too. Mm-hmm. Then it's also, I mean, I would, I would definitely use it as <laughs> myself personally. Oh yeah. You know, I would love to. I was looking into uh, to, in Denver, mm-hmm. and then I was looking in Kansas and Wichita. Jesus. And I was running, I was, yeah, I was. Oh yeah, my I was. gosh. I, I was like, oh, just because it's, I was looking anywhere where it's like a direct flight. 
Oh, okay. Because during the summertime, there's direct flights to Wichita. It's like only two hours and like. Oh, for because you would want to use it to go out there or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like eighty bucks for a flight. Mm. And they're for Denver. I mean, I've gotten flights for twenty bucks. <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd be. I'd probably see myself going to Denver once yeah. in a while, but and I remember Kansas. No way. I don't know. <laughs> the only reason I would ever go to Kansas was to go visit you, but you never met it. Long time. So. <laughs> Okay, quick story, quick side note. So me and my buddy Gene would always ask this guy, like, hey, when are you gonna invite us down there? Like, we want to go see like what Kansas is all about, whatever. Not once out of like the five, six years that he was down there, did he ever reach out and be like, hey guys, come visit me. You know, come meet my friends that I have here. Guy tucked us away in the corner and non-existent to him. Never wanted us to go to Kansas, so yeah, I've never been to Kansas, guys, and I probably will never go to you Kansas. Never will. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> unless we buy properties out there. No but way. <laughs> there's no reason for me to be out there. You don't deserve to go, dude. But what kind of friend does that, guys? That's what I'm trying to say. A good friend. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking out for me. Oh, thanks, I appreciate it. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Oh my god, I was looking into it though. But that was kind of uh, the way I would have it is because um, I was lo- thinking about my, my family. Mm-hmm. And if I was to purchase in Kansas, um, I would have. There's a, so in Kansas, there's a lot of basements. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So there's, um, I would probably look for a home where my uncles can, my uncle and my aunt can live in. Mm-hmm. And then the basement, have it like a walkout basement instead of coming down, it walks out to the backyard. Really? Yeah. Okay. Walks out to the backyard and then they have its own side entrance and it'll be like its own contained apartment. So I would just Airbnb that out. And then my uncles would maintenance, help me with maintenance and all that. That's in exchange for uh, for lodging. (laughs) (laughs) I looked into it, I was running the numbers and everything. That's interesting. So that so the basements you can go directly outside. I mm-hmm. thought basements were always inside. And you have to go no, downstairs, walk out and it's like underground or whatnot. No, yeah, it's a walkout. Base. My buddy has one. Ah. Yeah. It's like, well, the way it's set up, you walk up into it. It's like a few steps, mm-hmm. and you go into the living room. It's like multi split, multi split. Mm-hmm. You go downstairs. You go upstairs. Mm-hmm. But there, yeah, it's just like a you just walk straight out into the backyard, and it occurs to the backyard. It's like kind of like on a hill, and houses like this. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I've seen those. They have like the North Tustin too. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah, like that. Where it's exposed. Okay, cool. That's yeah, it. so just like that. So I would, I would, I was thinking about that. Okay. So Denver, family, and then you said Airbnb. The, yeah. In Kansas and possibly Denver. Denver, just a condo, like probably a high rise. Okay. Yeah, I remember you were looking yeah, into that. I was looking into those as well. HOA is like insane now. HOA was <laughs> crazy, but it was so cool. This <laughs> guy, it was worth every dollar. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, Utah. We're looking in Utah. We looked in Utah for multifamily units. Multi-family. Those are cool. Those are really good. Out of state investments are super appealing for the cap rates and mm-hmm. like the income. Mm-hmm. But the maintenance and like being so far away from the property is just yeah. what's scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wouldn't. Yeah, I would, wouldn't recommend that for anyone that's barely starting out and investing. Mm-hmm. And that isn't cash heavy. We wouldn't, invest, we wouldn't recommend them to go outside the state because it's too far. Exactly. You're gonna be able to manage it. You're gonna be able to look at it. I mean, when you're barely investing, you want to like be kind of close by so you yeah, can check it on yourself. Exactly. And if you get a late night call or whatever from the tenants, exactly. You I mean, Lord forbid, there's thing. like a like a small like hairline pinhole leak, mm-hmm. and it's uh, and you don't know about it, and it's vacant for a month, mm-hmm. and guess what? It's flooded. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like and just because it's a little tiny thing. Exactly. And and it's crazy. I mean, there are, we have clients that have homes and investments in like Riverside, which is like 45 minutes away, and they still want it closer. Yeah, you exactly. Know, they want to get rid of that. They're just getting rid of them and then move it closer. closer. Yeah. Because who, who doesn't want to be in Orange County? Who <laughs> doesn't? <laughs> the rents are good, it's got yeah. the beaches. Orange County is definitely long term investments here. Yeah. Yeah. So I always thought that was a pretty interesting structure too when they would start you know, more in inland or outskirts of LA, whatever, lower price points, and then move it closer to Orange mm-hmm. County. They just work their way in. It's yeah, exactly. Cool. I mean, it's all about leverage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. I agree. So is that it? Just Airbnb and then multifamily? And then home hacking. Home hacking. Home hacking, hacking okay. Yeah. What's, what's home hacking for, for us commoners that don't know, Leo? Oh my God. Okay, so let off the books. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's gonna get super excited. <laughs> Off the record, by the way. 
<laughs> no, I mean, I just think it's really cool, and, and like anyone can do it, and mm-hmm. a lot of people do it. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, home hacking at like the simplest form is like renting out a room in your house. Yeah, that's a home hack. Um, that's like simplified, but that's like, like the yeah, way that's like, like, the, we talk yeah, about it's completely in different. the bare essence of it. Like yeah. that's still home hacking in a sense. Um, I had a solo home to to a client. It was. It was an older home. I mean, not too old. It was like built in the '60s, mm-hmm. but somewhere, sometime in the '80s. Yeah. Sometime in the '80s, the homeowners. It was basically <laughs> a three-bedroom, two-bath home. Mm-hmm. Um, and the homeowners had added an extra living room and an extra huge, like, master bedroom upstairs. The one in Santa Ana. The one in Santa Ana. You know. That one's crazy. Yeah. No, tell us. Keep that telling the like story. Yeah. Amazing. That was a. a fantastic deal this guy if you want a good deal call this guy because yeah. he finds those on daily <laughs> so like, yeah she's very property specific buyer yeah. and i found this property and uh that's what had happened three two in the front mm-hmm. huge living room huge master bedroom upstairs um and all permitted yeah but what she did yeah she uh renovated it and what she did is she um she kind of just di- divided the home yeah you know, so she had a three bedroom, two bath up front, mm-hmm. and then the back unit, she just made the huge master bedroom reconfigured into a two bedroom. Yeah, one bath with the living room, self contained. Um, the and home. And had a kitchen too. No, no kitchen. No kitchen. Okay, so it was just the. So the no kitchen. kitchen. I'm not sure exactly what she did. Okay. I think she might have put like a kitchenette. Yeah. That's where it gets touchy because you know we have to get permits and everything. Yeah, but we don't know anything about that. Yeah. So, so they buy the house, it's on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything was a okay. Okay. All permitted um, mm-hmm. when we sold it to her. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure the the process she went afterwards. Mm-hmm. But I know the front unit so rented out for approximately like twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. And okay. then um, when she did the red the renovations in the back, I think it was like twenty three hundred. Twenty three hundred. So we're at what forty eight? Yeah, it's forty eight hundred. Forty eight hundred. And then month. her mortgage payments. I want to say like tw- like twenty five, like twenty seven hundred a month. So she's already making like two grand. Two grand a month of, of income, of just cash income. flow after all expenses are paid, mm-hmm. including her mortgage payment. Yeah, two thousand dollars a month. Yeah, how much did she purchase the property for? She's purchased it for just six hundred thousand. Six six hundred thousand? Yeah, that's really good. Six hundred thousand. So she purchased the house for a single family house for six hundred thousand. She's cash flowing two thousand dollars a month after everything's paid off. Mm-hmm. So it's going straight straight profit. And she was able to do this by buying a house and she split it into two, basically making it into a duplex. It's like a two and one, yeah. Yeah, making it into like a duplex almost. Yeah. Um, that's insane. Yeah. I mean, you can't buy, you can't really buy duplexes here in Orange County for 600000 No. You're closer to like the $700,000 range. Yeah, you'd probably look for a little, a tiny one. Yeah. And it's right down for 600000 So that's, uh, let's, call, let's call it, um, Extreme house hacking. Extreme house hacking. She's yeah. probably one of the best people to do it. Uh, house hacking too. Yeah. Because she's done that for a lot of her other investment properties. Yeah, exactly. And I know the. I mean, personally, if I would ever do it, mm-hmm. I mean, for sure, everything would have to be done right. With yeah. Permits and everything. Yeah. And and yeah, it's just because a so you don't want to go with the city and then like pay fines exactly. and they're gonna bring down your back. Because some and, people like get the house. So this is the wrong idea of house hacking, right? Yeah. Is they they get a house, it's three bedroom, and then they start adding structures to the back, and it looks all like and it's it's not a right. house. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a house. It's, it, I know we're in Anaheim, but geez, you know, yeah. that's a house. And they, people do this, right? And it works. I mean, sometimes I mean, um, uh, sometimes people have it for a very long time mm-hmm. in the backyard. It's obviously not permitted just because the way if you look at the way the roof is pitched, yeah, it's like a completely flat roof. It just looks out of place. It just looks out of place. Yeah, yeah for sure. And and then you rent that out, and I mean that's substandard construction that you're renting out to people. Mm-hmm. That right there is like huge liabilities. That's <laughs> scary. Huge. Yeah. I mean, what? I mean, who's did the electrical? Is it permitted? Was the mm-hmm. job done right? Yeah. Like. What if that thing just catches on fire one night? It's exactly. just crazy. So I mean, for me to, to ever do that, it would have to be like a hundred percent legit. Mm-hmm. Everything done professionally. Yeah. Because I mean, 
Yeah, I don't want to be a slumlord either. No, yeah, no, for sure. Exactly, so I want to make sure everyone's comfortable and yeah. everyone's happy and we're not sticking 30 families in one home <laughs> trying to make, <laughs> trying to pinch everything. So, I mean, yeah, that's intense, man. No way. And it has to be yeah, the right type of home, I yeah. would say. Yeah, I mean, you've done pretty, you've done a lot of research and you've seen a lot of properties that offer that too. So, yeah. um, you have like the right eye for those properties, mm -hmm. you know, that you can house hack and push it to its limit. So yeah. I thought that's pretty cool. So if you guys ever have questions about house, house hacking, house yeah. hacking, yeah, call this guy. Yeah, <laughs> he's got you covered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're looking for one of my other clients, and he wanted, he was considering buying a single family home versus mm -hmm. a townhome, mm -hmm. and I showed him one where it was already set up this way. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a three bedroom, two bath, detached garage, and then they added a family room towards the front. So imagine like a horseshoe shaped house. The front of the house, they, it was like an extra family room. Mm -hmm. And the homeowners prior already t put a kitchen in there. There was already like one of the bedrooms from the house was uh, shut off from the main house. Yeah. And then the wall was like opened up to the family room. So it looked like a, no, it, it was like a family room, room was the living room and the, the one bedroom. So it was like a one bedroom self-contained apartment. Dang. So I was like, what in the That's world? That's crazy. But the rest of the house was just garbage. The roof was like cable. Everything was shot. The electrical was bad. I was like, this is horrible. Yeah, no way. And it was just way overpriced. And I was, you know what? I mean, it's cool, but I mean, it's not. The potential is there, but I mean, if you're not cash heavy, for you're making not getting a good deal. Less. <laughs> we're not getting a good deal or a good price on it. It doesn't make any Yeah, sense. exactly. So I was like, no. So I pulled them out of that one, so that's we kept yeah. looking. Yeah, they're actually in escrow now. They're in escrow now? For a house, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's insane. So your first house that you, because you talked about this before, I mean, we talked about it off the camera, mm -hmm. where your your first purchase that you want to do is you want to do like a house hack, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Essentially the same thing? Well, I mean, it's changed so many times. Yeah. There's like so many ideas bouncing around. Yeah. Like, what, like This is what we just talked about, guys. There's so many ideas and so many ways that you can take. Exactly. Because I wasn't <laughs> going to live there yeah. originally. But now I'm like, I love to have people over. I'm like, why not live in a house yeah. <laughs> where parking's easier and this time? Why would I go move to like another, you know, apartment mm -hmm. or whatnot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, if I house hack it, then it'll pay for my living expenses for my apartment mm -hmm. and get like a nice one. But yeah. I can just have that place look nice and have people over there. So Yeah, that's true. So it won't be as extravagant. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's going to be house hack in a way where it be like for me and my brothers. So my brothers can have their own living space and I have my own living space. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you guys are together or you guys are separate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then now you're paying off a uh, property. You know, you're yeah, paying off the property. Yeah. So exactly. It makes a lot more sense that way. Yeah. That's cool. So you guys stay tuned for that because he's definitely going to be purchasing a home this year and we're mm -hmm. going to record it so you guys will see it firsthand. <laughs> step by step. I'll, I'll walk step you guys. by step, yeah. Exactly. I probably, I'll just have Alex represent me and I'll go in as a, just a, uh, like a buyer. I will have nothing to do with the transaction and see how he... he Man, uh, I would not wish <laughs> my worst enemy to represent you, dude. That's like the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> Let's see if Alex can handle me as a buyer. Yeah. Seriously. No way, man. I'd like hang up my license for that one, dude. I'll, I'll be like 100% of the transaction. I, I want to see it from a buyer's perspective, a true, in, in the true sense of the, the word. That's hilarious, man. So. No, but yeah, we'll definitely get you guys some behind the scenes footage so you guys can see all that good stuff, you know, how it's laid out, how the whole thing panned out for him you know, step by step to get to the house. So yeah. I think that'd be pretty exciting to share with the, with the people. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. That's it. I think that's it. I think we got to wrap up. I think we should wrap it up. Uh, we're, we're crunching for time here, but uh, hopefully you guys got some value from this episode. Um, some house hacking information. It is just stuff we talk about. Yeah, stuff, it's, this is literally what we talk about on a daily basis when off the camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we're just putting a camera in front of us. <laughs> But hopefully you guys, you know, got some value out of it. Ask some questions, share it, like it, please watch the videos. We would appreciate it. Um, we're appreciating all the feedback and the support that we've been receiving thus far. So thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. So we're out of here. Hasta luego. <laughs> Hasta luego. <laughs> See you, guys. <laughs>